Renee, I'm back. <clears throat> Sorry. So, this Sunday is the 8th of March, International Women's Day. <clears throat> Sorry. And in honor of that, I decided to do this video. You might be thinking, oh, are you going to do a video on feminism? Are you going to do a video on international fe interne intersectional feminism? What are you going to do? Yeah, there's lots of options to do here, really. Um, I have different thoughts. I <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. I had thought of maybe doing a uh, video of recommending feminism books, but I thought, you know, there, there's probably going to be heaps of uh, books or uh, books on videos on YouTube recommending, uh, uh, recommending books on feminism. So, am I going to be recommending books that are awful to women? No, no, no. That's not how I'm going to. I'm not going to do the opposite. No, no. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mention a list of ways I feel like should be more, have more, what's the word, word again, have more words, attention, and yeah, it should be more known. Females through history of a time that are just sadly forgotten, or not forgotten, but they're, they're not talked about too much. So I'm telling you this and uh, uh, doing this video in hopes that you, you'll go out, research these women, these females. Maybe one of you who are watching is a high, high, what's it called, um, big shot Hollywood person who wants to do a movie on all of these, hopefully. It's not impossible, you know, Hollywood people, people making videos also are audiences, so yeah. But also, like, if someone decides, you know what, I'm gonna make a book based on this person, I'd be also very, very happy. Because, yeah, I mean, a lot of time when you think about history, historical people, uh, you know about them from TVs, from movies. A lot of the time you know about people uh, based on, like, if they're done stuff, or if they're important, like, if they're old persons, or if they're... Uh, if they're royals or something like that. But there's lots of people who have done great stuff and they're just forgotten. And you just mentioned some few spaces in some obscure history documents or some space places, really. I suppose this is cheating in a way because a lot of these people I'm taking from Rejected Princesses, which is a well established, well known blog and books. Well, it's one, two books? One book and two... Yeah. Uh, there's some stuff that are published and some stuff that are online. And it's, I would say, kind of well known now, but like... I'm not sure, like, how do you know when something... I don't really think something can be too well known. And still, I mean, the point of Rejected Princesses is to look at female stories throughout the world, throughout history. and give uh, shine a light on them like give them some some attention so i'm thinking like the people they talk about often aren't that well known and it's not that uh it's not guaranteed that you my viewer will know about Reject rejected princesses or that you'll know about all the people from there so so yeah that's just a bit of a long intro to this video i'm gonna start it now and actually this first one it's actually original, well, not original, but it's not from Rejected Princesses. Uh, but yeah, I'll link, I'll link stuff in a doobly doo to more information about all these people. So the first one, <coughs> sorry, is Anna Elisabeth Saal or Anna Elisabeth uh, Ellingsen. She was an uh, entrepreneur or businesswoman in the 1800s. I suppose she came to it in the old-fashioned way, like, well, in the Polish way, because her dad was also a businessman, so he bought, uh, what? He bought, like, a hotel and, like, a shopping centre. Well, not shopping centre, but he bought, like, a, a centre uh, that was in Chiangai, on a witch and old fishing place where lots of fishers came back through 
So they had to get there to buy food, to buy drink, etc., etc. So they had and lots of fish people went through that harbor and that island. So they had lots of um, customers. And yeah, so Anna Elizabeth, she was born into this. Uh, she did marry when she was 21. Uh, and uh, <laughs> she had two sisters. They said about the sisters, the first one was the most beautiful. The second one, uh, the most uh, funny. And the third one was the most clever, which is Anna, Anna Elizabeth. The most clever one, really. So yeah, that's quite something to a quote to have about yourself. Uh, she got married at 21, uh, but she still around the center, the shopping center. Can you say shopping center when it's from the 1800s? I suppose more like shopping, well, in the center, in which you'd say center. When I say shopping center, I'm just come, always thinking elevators and stuff, and which you didn't have in the 1800s. Okay, a shopping, a shopping community, the community, you get what I'm talking about. A place where you have to go to get all your supplies. Yeah, a shopping shopping center, I will just say it. Um, and yeah, she ran it for most of her life, first with her first husband. Uh, unfortunately, her, her son died four years old. Uh, and her husband died, well, her first husband died when she was like 28. She was very, very early on. Uh, and then she then ran uh, this shopping, bis her business, she ran her business for like eight years alone. And then she decided to marry one of her employees. Because, well, in those days you kind of had to remarry and stuff. And the second marriage was a very happy marriage. I think the first one was happy as well, but like, according to sources, the second one was very happy anyway. Uh, and... Um, uh, they prospered and they became one of the most wealthy wealthy um, uh, wealthy business owners in all of Northern Europe. So that's quite something, really. And a lot of it was pay, was down to Anna Elizabeth. And I was just reading up on her because, well, okay, I discovered her or I found out about her uh, last year, two years ago. Two, two or one years ago, when I went to uh, to the house that she lived in, when they had like uh, a guiding tour, a tourist tour, a uh, guiding tour, a guiding tour. It sounds sometimes stuff sounds so weird in English, even though I know it's right. But I know they they had like a guiding tour through the uh, through the houses and the yeah and the and the houses and the old buildings. Really. So it told you about like who would live there and stuff. And one of them was Anna Elizabeth. Anna Elizabeth. And she, uh, and they said that she used to have, she used to give a uh, uh, self-defense class to her, her mates. I didn't find it in another link. Well, in another links that I just read but just now. But like, why would the tour guide lie? You probably won't. But for some reason, people just got to write about that in uh, in those articles, but yeah. Anyway, she gave her mates self. Uh, she gave her mates. Um, what again? Uh, self, self defense classes. So that's really quite fun to do that in the eighteen hundreds. That's not normal. She's a very um, uh, respected woman, female business owner. Even though she had a husband for most of her life, she was very respected in her own way. And also kind of fun anecdote, when people came to visit her, she would all, all, she would always, she would uh, often stand at two, two or three feet in front of her husband and say, welcome to me. <laughs> so kind of cocky, but also original. So that's, yeah, that's fun really. So I'll link her info in Doodoo. Now I'm thinking maybe there isn't available in English. Well, I suppose you could Google Translate it, and you have more or less the same thing. And Google Translate, Google Translate often gives you some idea, though often takes something wrong and stuff. But yeah, 
yeah, so that's Elizabeth. She lived until her 80s when she was in her 80s. Uh, and also, unfortunately, she died falling down the stairs and because the uh, doctor was so far away, he couldn't get her in time. So she died just falling down the stairs. Well, the stairs were steep and steep and she was old. So, but yeah, a bit comical and sad. So yeah, there's that. Okay. So then you have the next one, which is not cheating. Well, I'm making this video up myself, so I'm making the rules. Okay, so none of this is cheating, really. But yeah, um, this one next is mm, it's not cheating in a way that it's uh, inspired or I found her in Rejected, Rejected Princesses uh, blog. And her name, Manuela Sainz. She lived in the 1700s, 1800s in Peru, in Latin America. <clears throat> she was the mistress of Simon Bolivar. She was also a spy, uh, so she helped uh, with the revolution of getting uh, Latin America free from Spain. And she uh, she was big in the spy community. She saved Simon Bolivar's life several times. Did she get uh, any uh, any credit for this? Oh no, of course not, because men are stupid. Uh, she also had a pet snake. No, sorry, a pet tiger. Tiger snake. One well, of those. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it in the world. Uh, and yeah, she survived several attacks, several uh, attempts uh, on her life. But she said, "No, no, I'm not gonna die." Uh, she was uh, captured once, and then she managed to float away out of the situation by like. No, why would you capture me? I'm just a poor old woman. Yeah, I'm not intimidated at all. And then in a few days later, she's Ricky Harrock again. Just really fun character, really. I just really love her. I really want there to be a movie about her. Or, oh, I suppose, also really a book series or a book. Because she really had a very fascinating life. In her old days, well, all this. She retired uh, as a shoe salesman in the countryside and died at like 60 or 50. So she wasn't old when she died, but like, yeah, she had a fascinating, very fascinating life. Uh, yeah, that's Man Manuela Science. I'll link her in the blue. Well, I'll link them all in the blue. Next up, you have, I suppose this one is kind of more and more not obscure because more and more people are talking about her. Like she's She's stocking up, she's um, popping up on more and more lists and stuff, but like, still, she's just so cool, I just have to mention her. Julie Dobigny. Oh, oh, we actually don't know her last name, but we think it's Dobigny. D L. You'll just see it when I link, have a link. She was French, living in uh, France in the 1600s, 1700s, yeah, something like that. Her dad was... Um, Wealthy Frenchman, and her mom, I think, was just like a servant or something. But she, her dad still gave her <coughs> sorry, education and stuff, which she enjoyed. But she also liked, like, she also liked to run on horseback. She liked to do unwomanly things. And then uh, when she was seventeen, her dad wanted to marry her off because you know if you marry her off, uh, she'll stop being so unwomanly. No. She ran away. Uh, okay, so her dad f found her and locked her in, uh, put her in a uh, mon uh, nunnery? No, monastery. What happens now? She falls in love with one of the other uh, nuns. They run away together. No, no. It's not just that. No. Uh, when While they're escaping, she burns down the nunnery <laughs> and then she ends up traveling the French countryside, making money by doing, dueling different people. Because, yeah, she's a great, great duelist. She's very good at it. So, yeah, she duels for and uh, travels around the French countryside with her, uh, with her uh, girlfriend for some time. And then she's a bit like, you know what, I'm tired of you. She breaks up with her. Uh, and then she ends up in Paris. What should she do in Paris? Yeah, she becomes an opera singer. A uh, high time opera singer, everyone loves her. And then people still think like something, well, you can't be good, you're a woman, or ah, ah, cat calling you. And then, of course, 
He challenged them to duels and always, always wins. He's just, just such, such a character. So, so much fun. Just female, girl power all the way. And I just, I love her. I love her. Yeah, I'll link her in Dublin as well. I just, she needs to be in her correct now. She needs to have all the statues and all the movies and stuff. She just, she sounds like a sort of great, great character and great, great female. I just, woman, I just, I love her. So, so cool. Yeah. So, yeah. If it's not the Julie Dobbin you video, I'm gonna move on. And next is Marguerite de Bressy. Another uh, French uh, person, female person, oh, she's a person as well. Um, she lived in the 16, no, sorry, 1400s. Uh, her dad was a uh, small, what's the word, lord. They, uh, they were invaded uh, because there was like all different conflicts and stuff. They were invaded by a neighboring enemy. A neighboring enemy started to kill her dad and uh, raped her and all the mates, which, you know, not cool. Then, after they left, they said, like, oh, you know what, we're gonna get revenge. So they joined the army, and then they started uh, going around, uh, just first joining the army, and then they went to um, the enemies and killed them one by one. And before they killed them, they, they had, like, masks on, before they killed them, they took off the mask and said, you're killed by a woman. Revenge. Unfortunately, in like well, the big final battle, she was killed. So she only lived to like 25 or something. But I really think that people, even though they have short life, if they still had impactful, empowering life, they really stood, still should be recognized, really. Recognized is a great word. So yeah, uh, Marguerite de Brissou, killer of rapists. Yeah, I'm probably butchering your last name, but um, yeah, I'll link all the names in do do <clears throat> Then up next you have Ching Shi, which was, uh, yeah, I love these, the first three were Europeans, I probably should do, well, the first three of these were Europeans. Uh, yeah, I should have gotten more for all over, but yeah, I ended up with this list. But yeah, Ching Shi was a Chinese pirate lord. Yeah, she went around uh, Asia uh, being one of the badass pirates ever. Uh, first she started legit and then she became a pirate and then just like um, conquering everything. Everyone was so scared of her. If she was so scared, everyone of her, that uh, the, the, what's the name again? Uh, the Chinese government had to uh, had to negotiate with her and they end up giving her a pension and a salary and yeah I mean you don't really do that to your enemies do you yeah it's quite quite someone else really quite some quite quite a character really really fun um, uh, so yeah I'll link her on Doodoo as well and then up last but not least yeah Annie Jump Cannon, um, <clears throat> sorry, an uh, English uh, academic, because even though lots of really great females in history have been like kicking ass, literally, there's also lots of females who have all the great brains and still being ignored, which is just stupid. And you know, you can be impressive both by kicking ass or also by kicking ass mentally. You can do both. Both are just as important, really. So yeah, Annie Camp Cannon, Jump Cannon, she lived in England in the 1700s. 1600s, I think it's 1700s. Yeah. Anyway, I'll link it all in Dubudu. She was the daughter of a uh, wealthy, wealthy English family. She got an education, as, as was most people of uh, well, well, forget, even if you're girl or female, uh, girl, girl or, or male, or boys. Uh, but yeah, uh, but instead of like giving her an education and then saying like, you have to learn about piano and then get a husband. No, no. Uh, they discovered that she really enjoyed education, so she got a higher education as well. 
not just uh, primary, but also like uh, university education. And she she got a really big big interest in uh, the stars, so she became an astrologist, huge astrologist. She made lots of astrologist systems that are still in use today. She, uh, yeah, she revolutionized astrology. She also started becoming a suffragette. Yeah, so she lived in late 1800s because suffragettes aren't like a thing in the 1800s. So, yeah. Uh, so she started doing uh, lectures on suffragette movements and like helping everyone like being powered and inspired. And in addition to all these shoe stuff, did she let it uh, stop her? No, she did not. Impressive? Yeah, I would say so. So, yeah, and that is actually my list. <laughs> Became quite a long video, but hey. Females, we deserve long videos and attention because we are quite impressive, I would say, a lot of time. Uh, I'll link the Redacted Princesses in the Dooloo and other stuff in the Dooloo. And I hope you have a nice week and I hope you feel inspired and empowered if you're a female, or I suppose if you're just a man as well. I hope you get inspired to read more about different females from history. And yeah, this is me, Sangwune, out.